I'm not sure there's ever been a worse car in here, do you? Probably not, if I'm Took honest. Took out a Ferrari this morning and now that's sat here. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's all good. Um, well, we should probably explain what this is doing here. So this is my 23-year-old Discovery 2 V8 uh, that I bought for a bit of off-roading, a bit of well, it's a bit of a skip on wheels, really, uh, as you'll see. Um, but it's 140,000 miles. I've had it for about two months. Um, not a scrap of service history anywhere. So. Um, you could call me brave, you could call me stupid, but here we are, two months later, and it's still driving around. Now, um, you could probably understand it's not the cleanest car in the world. Uh, it's had uh, a weekend in Wales last weekend uh, doing some off-roading. Um, you can see that because most of it is still on the car. Um, but uh, the mighty thing plugged, us, plugged itself away. Uh, it's had some cosmetic uh, imperfections, but not all too bad actually. The uh, yeah, some adaptive lights, also auto headlamp adjusting. Um, but yeah, you can quite clearly see it's a bit of a stiff on wheels. So uh, I mean, you can just get up in that. I mean, you can see in there the kind of level. It was actually quite dry whilst we were away, uh, so it could have been muddier. But uh, you did tell me to do my best, so I was avoiding. No muddy puddles, was I? That you have done. Um, so hopefully I've, hopefully I've done you proud. Um, and it's uh, made it all, all worth it for you. Now, I'm a bit disappointed uh, to show you the interior because you can see, well, it's had some, it's had, ooh, let's talk about, let's talk about Trouble Suites. The first of our on the road gluttony, Starburst. Now that's a tier one travel suite, if you ask me. <laughs> Just a bit fiddly with the wrapper. The driving, driving knees, opening wrappers is very fun. Uh, nice little repair there to the seat, just to give you a bit of a walk around of the interior. Nice little repair of the seat. What have we got there? Extra strong mints of these. <gasps> oh, they're the extra strong. We're not messing around. Extra strong mints. Probably wise to use that before you get in the car, actually. Uh, so, what else have we got in here? Oh, crunchy! Wow. Now here we go. Evidence, evidence of crunchies. We've got bottles of water in here. We've got mini cheddars. What have we got in the back? Me, my wife, and two friends were off-roading in this car. So, uh, oh, I've got a copy of Evo magazine just to see if they've ever written a five-star review about this car. But unfortunately, I don't think they do a six-star. So, unfortunately, it didn't make the cut. What have we got there? Just in case you caught short in the wilderness. Uh, well, they, those are, I don't think those are mine. Off road driving shoes. I don't think they're mine, <laughs> but fine. Uh, umbrella test lines, numerous bottles of water. Oh, here we go. Ooh, touch me in. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? Uh, four for 125. Well, I'm a sucker for a bargain, so you're not, not going to have a crunch guy for four for 125. Every single time. I get rid of this cobweb, it comes back within 24 hours. So there's something horrible living within this wheel, spare wheel well, it's probably something out of Jurassic Park, I think, because that's, that's a pretty good job for it. 24 hours worth, I keep blasting it away. It's brushing up a few, a few green lanes, you can see this has never had anything remotely polishing mop related anywhere near it in its 140,000 mile history. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got. Uh, you can just kind of get yourself an idea of what this thing's really like. That's um, dusty. Um, I don't think I've ever had. Uh, if you were to do a swab test in this car, I don't know what you'd find. Um, I bought it off a dealer that took it in part exchange, and when I offered him es essentially below trade value for it, he just said, "Yep, yeah, okay." <laughs> so I'm not sure what that tells you. But he wanted it gone. In fact, shall we have a look under the bonnet at my V8, at my V8 motor? Let's see what uh, let's see what it's all about. There is a study quite good set, they're not crashed and broken. It is actually quite a good car. It runs pretty well, if I'm honest, for its lack of service history. I do think it's been serviced in its life. Um, I didn't break down, which is good. Um, it's got its faults, and I will apologise in advance for any oil that it leaks onto the floor. But um, thrills. Thrill sometimes does that, but that's okay. But that's my V8 motor. It's, um, I think, again, that's probably the cleanest part of it is under the engine bay. So what we're doing today 
is attempting to renovate this car. We're going to be going right through the stages of cleaning and polishing and hopefully we can get this turd polished back to its former glory. So stick around, stay tuned, hopefully you will see quite a satisfying transformation. to catch us at a particularly wet moment. I love the weather forecast in this country. It said it was going to be sunny, nice today, but um, clearly here we, that's... Here we are. Here we are, yes. <laughs> but um, so far, stage one completed. Operation Get Whales Off The Car. Uh, we've got citrus going on, which is going to take out all the stuff from the paint. <laughs> <laughs> Technical. <Take two. laughs> Pull that remover fallout remover going on because it would have no doubt had lots of fallout remover applied to it in its life <laughs> also right we found our guy we found our guy i was expecting more to be honest but we found our guy poor little fella oh, i feel like the lens is on him is we've, it? we've ruined his house we've ruined his house i'm sorry mate safe to say he's having a worse day than he's us he's not having a good day <laughs> Can we get, should we take this off and see what, see what it reveals? Yeah. He's definitely pissed the spider off now. Oh, he's definitely pissed him off now. Getting it back on will be the hard part. <laughs> this was a Land Rover car when it was new. I know this because, because my father-in-law ran this car when it was brand new. Which is a bizarre turn of events that I now own this car. <laughs> bizarre turn of events. Your wife could potentially have been conceived in the back of said Land Rover. Well, <laughs> based, based on the fact she was born in 1991. <laughs> I'd say probably not. <laughs> there are holes in your argument. Right? <laughs> but I'd say I've been handed a piece of clay and uh, essentially what clay does. So if you clay the paintwork, it essentially removes all of the embedded contamination, all the embedded kind of stuff you don't want in your paint and uh, this essentially prepares the car for polishing because what you don't want is all of the stuff that's embedded into the paint rolling around on your pad almost creating a sandpaper effect while you're polishing so that's not what we want now i'm gonna throw it out there i don't think this car's ever been clay barred before <laughs> i don't think most Le most land river discoveries have been clay barred um if not why not but you can just feel it you can feel you can almost hear it You can hear the grit and the, the crud coming out of the paintwork. Now, I can feel when up over the areas that I've already done how much smoother it's traveling over the paintwork. So that tells me that the paintwork is freshening up, being nicely prepared, it's a lot smoother, and we'll hopefully have a cleaner surface for paint. And see, just with those few passes, just how much dirt has come out of the paintwork. Now, obviously, that's not going to come out. Uh, with just normal jet washing, this is going to 
only come out with this sort of treatment. So, we continue. I'll probably be here for a good, oh I don't know, four or five hours doing it with the amount of stuff that's coming out of it. But with every pass I go over where I've just done, you can just feel how much smoother it is. So yeah, that's exactly what we want. Uh, that's the finish that we're after, uh, ready for polishing stage. So hopefully you'll join me soon in the polishing stage, but until then, I've got a lot of, a lot of this left to do, so. So what, we, what have we learned from this? Uh, well, we've washed it, we've snow foamed it, we've tar and glued it, we've fallout removed it, we've citrused it, we've done everything. We've clay barred it as well. That brings the paintwork right the way back so that you can really see the true form of its condition. Now, walking around the car, obviously we know about the, the wheel arches, that's 20 years of abuse, but you can really see just how poor the paintwork is with previous marks upon the surface, lots of swirl marks, the, the bonnet's very, very, very flat paintwork wise, it's not very good at all. But condition report, it's not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be, but I think it is still pretty bad. Um, I mean, there's a lot of modern cars that look like this, believe it or not. If they're just washed wrong a few times, they can really, really damage the paintwork. So we're going to do a little bit of a, a walk around now and just explain uh, what we found. So we've got down the side head marks that have gone down the side. That was probably me, to be honest. So uh, there's a few fine scratches along the side uh, where it's been sort of brushed up against a, a hedge. And uh, that's, it's not gone through to the paint, which is great and very fortunate. So, uh, but they are too bad to just polish it, well, too bad to just wash out, so we'll be polishing those out, hopefully. Uh, we've got a bit of damage on the side here. We've got, uh, well, we lost the G from GB, so it's, uh, I think, what does that tell you? The, the great bit fell off, <laughs> so what does that tell you? Uh, okay, so we've got some damage along the side here, which is obviously, I don't think that's a hedge, I think that's just general wear and tear. That should hopefully come out. Somebody opened their door up onto it, pinned in. Shocking, absolutely gutted. Uh, we've got a bit of a scratch there. We've got, these are actually quite, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, but these are quite, this is a good example of exactly what we're working with today. It's exactly, this is typical of what this car's got all around it. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. Um, this is a good shot, so you can just see the bonnet now. You can just see how bad this has been washed in the past. And I've never actually sat on this bonnet, you know, it's never had a hedge go over the top of it. This is from poor previous paint maintenance. So it's most likely been washed with a brush at a car park, a uh, car wash, that type of thing. It's been really not, not, not brilliantly taken care of, unfortunately. So we're gonna have a good go around it. We're gonna prepare it, ready for its polishing stage. And you're re we're gonna, we're gonna, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a 50-50 on the bonnet. We're gonna leave one side as it was, and we're gonna leave one side freshly polished so that you can really see the difference and how important it is to really maintain your paintwork because it does give such a good glossy finish at the end. So uh, yeah, you'll join us for more when we show you through the stages polishing and what it looks like afterwards. More tea? Anything from the trolley, sir? <laughs> Any duty-free for you today? Any snacks or refreshments? <laughs> What are we doing here, Dan? What's, what's this little device you have? So we're measuring now the thickness of the paint on yep. the panel. Um, right. Just to see how much we've got to play with uh, in regards to cutting out the defects that are in it. So we've measured the inside of the door shut. So generally on the inside of the door shut is only a single layer of paint and yep. lacquer. So that's generally a point that you can work to. Uh, it measures 58 microns. On the bonnet, we're around about 115. So there's plenty to play with, suggested probably never been machine polished before. But does that, could that intimate that the car's had a load of paint in its life or is that just, is it a, a different manufacturer's got thicker paint than others? Um, on most standard paint finishes you'd expect to see anywhere from 90 to 140 microns from factory paint. Um, so 124 is about right. So this device is telling us that it's an aluminium bonnet and the paint layer is original. So it's telling me up here that it'll be between 70 and 166 is what it's sort of specifying. Uh, so yeah, we've got plenty to, uh, plenty to play with. Oh, it's going to look like a brand new old one by the time we're finished. <laughs> yeah, your handbag marks out the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so what Dan's going to be doing here is assessing the paint and how it responds to the polishing pad and compound that we've chosen. So we're starting off with a least or less aggressive. Lease, is that even a word? Probably not. Less aggressive. Well, we, 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 we carry, we carry on. That's, that's what I was looking for. The least, <laughs> the least aggressive. And see how we get on. So Dan's just going to do a couple of passes now. 
to see how we how we fare. So just a little test batch, just to see what we're going to use from a little pad and polish combination. Obviously, ignore the variety of stone chips here, but um, you can quite clearly see from where we were. So if you get that in the light, you can see all the swirls and all the scratches embedded into the paintwork. To now where we have arrived at with a simple 10-15 second patch test, you can just see that a lot of the swirls have been taken out. Obviously, this is a 140,000 mile Land Rover. It's not going to be perfect because of the stone chips, but that is a considerable improvement from where we were. Uh, and you'll also be very surprised to hear that this is all original paint on this car, we've determined. So, um, yeah, nice to see a bit of love going into the old Land Rover. Just done. Uh, believe it or not, that actually wasn't, wasn't it. I thought, wow, it looks as good as new, and apparently that wasn't good enough. So, uh, what we've done is we've done a refinement of this section that we've tried. Again, please ignore the stone chips because it's a 140,000 mile Land Rover, but just how clear now you can see the paint. Look at all the flecks of the metallic in the paint. I never thought I'd ever say this about this Land Rover when I was blasting through the, uh, the, the mud in it at the weekend. But um, again, by contrast, look at the state of this side and then look at how refined and glossy and generally clear that paintwork now looks. Uh, hopefully the rest of the car is gonna look like that when it's done. I think it's gonna be an incredible transformation. So, you remember the A-Pose trim? I, I might not have shown you this actually, this is the A-Pose trim, it's a, it's a dark plastic which is just horrible, cloudy, wouldn't wash. So, um, the boys have got the mop and polish to the other side. Look at the difference. How amazing is that? It's just back to how it was when it was probably new, probably better than when it was new. Just stuff like this, little details like this just go all the distance to just add value and add all of the adds all the value to the service provided. If you look at the state of this compared to the other side, you just you can see where all the time, effort, money goes to get these things right. It's incredible. going through this car with the paint and go through different stages. So we've done a stage one cut and we've done a second stage refine. Um, obviously, it's not gonna be a brand new car, but look at the difference in it. I feel bad for actually leaving my fingerprints on it. I've just put my fingerprints on it and I would not normally do that with a 140,000 mile Land Rover, i.e. do not touch. It's, it's absolutely transformational. I can't believe the difference in the car. It's, it's, it's got so much more gloss, it feels like, it just feels like it's just had a completely new lease of life. This, this car could have gone one or two ways um, when I bought it. It could have been used as an off-roader and battered until it died, but I think now it's got itself a new second wind and it's just it's fantastic. Obviously, there's going to be things that we can't do, so I need to get some new door um, window seals. I need to get some new uh, fenders for the wings, but paintwork-wise, look at it. Let the, let the shine do the talking for you. It's absolutely transformational, and I cannot believe that there's going to be a cleaner Disco 2 that's not in a museum on the road today. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Just This was like sandpaper this morning, and now I can just, there's no imperfections, I can just glide my hand over the finish. Absolutely tremendous. Now, this is only in a few hours as well. This is, this is really where you see the value. This is a few hours work. Imagine what it would look like with a week and maybe 500 quid worth of plastics and stuff spent on it. It would it'd look like a brand new car. So um, the guys at Pyramid, this is where you see your value. This is where it all makes sense.
get in touch, make a booking with them because it really, 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 I'm, I'm lost for words as you can probably tell, it's just a complete transformation. The car is sentimental to me and I can't wait to, I can't wait to start showing it to people and what these guys can do, it's, it's incredible. Like, let me look at the things like this. This was just completely faded and black, it's the little small touches. So again, great, great work by the Pyramid guys, huge shout out. Unbelievable. Job well done.